everybody stand, please. Stand, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, would you catch hands, please, with your neighbor? Catch hands with your neighbor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Listen. Listen. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, how excellent is your name and your presence and your spirit with us. Thank you for, for this community. Thank you for this people. Thank you for this diversity. Thank you for this commitment. Thank you for the strangeness of these people. Thank you for all that, Lord. Thank you for all that. For we shall continue to go on. And we shall find our way with your guidance, with your love, your love which teaches us that we should love unceasingly. Your love which says to us, don't ever give up, go on. Your love that says to us, it's not over yet, that just go on. And now we come to receive your love in this community and in this world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Oh yes, oh God. Hear this then as we celebrate life. Amen, hallelujah, right on, shalom, salam. and sisters embrace each other
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to say this now and then I'm going to say it later on because I want to emphasize this. On next Sunday, which is the 11th, ABC is coming in to do a special with Glide and it will be shown prime time on Christmas Eve. Okay? That's Channel 7. Now what I want you to do, listen to me. Put on your loud colors next Sunday. And if, I know most of you have already done, you've done your Christmas shopping anyway, so wear your new stuff. But in case you haven't gotten it, wear last year's stuff, okay? <laughs> what we'd like for you to do at the 11 o'clock, they're going to film, I mean, they're going to be, have cameras everywhere here. And, and I want you to remember that it will be a one hour celebration, but they're gonna, we're going to extend it for 30 minutes because we've got to make sure that we've, got, we've covered everything that we need to cover. And so uh, come uh, willing, hopefully, to stay at least 30 more minutes. And if some of you have to sneak out, what I want to do is I want people to replace them. Amen. You see what I'm saying? See, you can't, you can't fool around with this kind of stuff. I mean, you got to be ready for it. So, so I'm saying to the Glide folks, if some of the visitors have to go, be ready to replace them. I know you will, too. I don't, we don't have to worry about that. At this time, however, I bring to you the fabulous Glide Ensemble.
life When things are rough I've had my share of blessings
You gotta give something up if you're gonna feel better. You gotta lay something down if you feel better. Yeah. You just can't come in here and say you feel better unless you're willing to go all the way. And here at Glide, we gonna take you all the way. Yeah. Let me just say that um, to report on my condition, I'm mending slowly but surely. I get this cast off tomorrow, and I don't know what, I don't know what else they're gonna put on my hand, but I tell you what, I'm so sick of this cast, I don't know what to do. This, but anyway, you know, you have to, if they say wrap it up, you wrap it up, that's it. Um, not only do I want to say something about next Sunday, but I want to say something about December the 14th. We're going to do something new that we've never done before here. We're going to, on December the 14th, starting at 6 o'clock to 9, we're going to have people bring in pots of stew and soup. You. We're going to bring in ethnic stew and sexual orientation stew. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> class stew. Uh, oh, I said that. I said that. <laughs> That's what they like. <laughs> Soup of the queens. Yes. <laughs> We're going to bring in racial stew, ethnic stew and soup. Class soup and stew, if there's such a thing. Whatever. We're gonna, I want you to do that. What we're going to do also is we'd like for you to bring gifts for AIDS patients and seniors. And that night on the 14th, we're going to wrap those gifts and make sure that some of our people get them to the hospice, the hospitals, and to senior citizens' centers where they will benefit from gifts that come from Glide, from our heart, and from our soul. So would you join? We have no, you know, just come. That, that's no thing. You just, if you don't have no stew or no soup, go down there at the corner and buy some Lipton soup and bring it. <laughs> No, I'm teasing. Come on anyway. We want everybody, you know, just come on and share with us. Let's have a great experience together. And we're going to sing carols at night too. And Glide Ensemble is going to be upstairs rehearsing and they're going to join us at a point as well. I think what I'm going to do is hold up because on this song, uh, Gordon Barranco is the judge, uh, a judge, and he's a member of our... Our board here at Glide. Here come the judge. Yeah, here's, here come the judge. And he's a he's a member at Glide, and and has been uh, in our on our board for a long time. We thoroughly appreciate him. He's got some things to say at this time. Gordon. Well, thank you, Cecil. Good morning, everybody. Now is the time when we're going to take up the offering. I'd like the ushers to just hold on in the back because we need to give everybody here the opportunity to reach into your wallets and your purses and your checkbooks because now is the one time during the celebration we're going to have the offering. I said at 9 o'clock if you just want to sign your name to the check we'll fill in all the rest of the blanks. <laughs> Before we do that though I want to tell you a few things about Glide that I want to share with you that some of you may already know. But you know, we get a lot of publicity around the holidays about feeding people and helping people. But I want to I want to remind all of you that 365 days a year, Glide feeds three meals a day to anyone who comes here. Yeah. 
In addition to that, we have over 35 continuing programs, one of which you're going to hear a lot about this morning. But we have recovery programs for everyone because we are all in need of some kind of recovery. Amen. We have other programs of education, computer programs, job programs, and other empowerment programs. Now, of course, this is the holiday season, and that tends to draw a lot of attention to the plight of those in need. And here at Glide, we have determined that this month we're going to serve over 120,000 people. Now, at, at Glide, we move with our love, we move with our spirit, but everything that I mention to you costs money. And there is a myth that I want to dispel at this time that Glide has unlimited financial resources. We do not. We depend on your giving 365 days a year, but clearly during the holidays when we have food bag giveaways, toy giveaways, we feed more people than we normally feed, we even need more financial resources. So I want to encourage you to give very freely this holiday season. The second thing I want to mention to you is you will see in your pews in front of you a pledge card. We are very dependent on your pledges. We don't make any requirement as to the amount of the pledge, but we need you to pledge for the year 1995. If you would take your time and fill out these cards and either drop them in the collection uh, a basket or in the, uh, leave them in the office downstairs or in Freedom Hall downstairs, we would appreciate it. I just want to read a two-sentence statement that I believe was composed by the president of our corporation, who is Janice Mirakatani, per perhaps with the help of the chief executive officer of our, our, our uh, uh, corporation, who is Cecil Williams. But it reads as follows. This year's theme is a compassionate community in unity. The worse it gets, the better we are. A cold front is moving across this nation and we don't just mean the inclement weather. We know it will get rougher on the poor and on organizations that serve the poor. We need you now more than ever. We do need you now more than ever. Please give freely and if the ushers would come forward at this time while I introduce to you Claire Rabat who will give the announcements. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I want to tell you about a few things that are going on here as fast as I can possibly talk. Um, first of all, I want to tell you about an idea I had in terms of the building that we're putting together next door, a nine-story therapeutic facility. Um, we were trying to raise six million dollars. This is going to be a place where people, single family, um, uh, single parent families will be, people recovering from chemical dependency, people who are survivors of all kinds of abuse, and people with AIDS. And what I've thought about is talking to and writing to my extended family and asking them if we could possibly create a gift so that it would maximize my participation by asking other people in my family to join in and perhaps we would be able to do a room or part of the kitchen or a bathroom or something. So I want to suggest to you that while you're thinking about sending out your Christmas cards, your holiday cards, that maybe you create a, a, a letter and Xerox it and just stick it in asking your family, let's do this together. Let's have a room that says the Dada family or whatever. So please, if you're blessed as I am to be able to give, please think about including your family or possibly your co-workers. And if you need more information to send along with your letter, please go downstairs. There's a, a table with a model of the facility on it and you can get more information down there. So please join me in, in helping this um, become a reality. Okay, um, in terms of the Holiday Diversity Festival Cecil was talking about on December 14th, there are flyers that have some information about the kinds of gifts you could um, bring uh, for the shut-ins and the people with AIDS. The Relationships Group will be meeting on Tuesday, December 13th, right here in Freedom Hall from 6 to 8 p.m. It's free, and the topic this month is learn to communicate better in all your relationships. Everybody is welcome. Go to Freedom Hall today to get some unique Christmas gifts for your shopping list. Um, one possibility would be the new concert tape with uh, this wonderful ensemble and Cecil and Maya Angelou. It'll be ready on the 15th. Order it now. Uh, also downstairs you can get tapes or videos of today's celebration and also of other celebrations. 
And there are also books by Cecil, Jan, The Kids of Glide, and a book by the survivors of sexual abuse. Also, we'd like you to go to Freedom Hall and sign up to volunteer for various activities that are happening during this busy holiday month. On December 21st, the Food Bag Day uh, from 7 to 3 o'clock. Please join us. Um, December 22nd, the Toy Distribution. And uh, we also do need you to donate uh, new toys for that, so if that's possible to do, please try to get them to us uh, well before the 22nd so we can wrap them up. And on December 25th, we'll be serving meals here. We need volunteers. So all of, the, all of this, there's information about downstairs on the um, volunteer t um, sign up table, so please go down there and sign up. Um, we also need you to adopt a family for the holidays. I did this ab about nine years ago, and these people are still a very important part of my life, so we urge you to go ahead and adopt a family. You don't have to make a nine-year commitment. I just fell in love with these people, so we're, we're family now. So again, information at the volunteer table. I think I covered everything, so thank you. Thank you, Claire. Also, we, um, I need 75 new members this month. And I know that those of you that have been coming for two weeks or two months or two years or 20 years, uh, would you help me reach my goal for new members by going back after we finish today through that door and the first door to your left becoming a new member? Help me meet my goal. I appreciate that. Now, what else do we need to say something about? Did we cover everything? Okay. Joy, we're not going to sing another song because we're going to move into this other thing. Now, if you want the kids to stay in for this, that's fine. We'd love to have them stay. But we're going to do our recovery thing now. Okay, that's great. Let them stay. Whatever. Whatever you all feel. Y'all want to stay? You want to stay or you want to go? Well, the kids go back to... They want to go? I'm not getting the right signal. I'm getting about ten signals here. Because I asked the question. Yeah, just a minute. They know where they're going. I'm trying to keep them here. Oh, Brandon wants to go. Okay. You got him? Oh. I want you to know this young lady right here, Lauren, came here on Thanksgiving Day at 6.30 a.m. and worked until all, well, practically all day. Just to stand up, Lauren. Stand up. All right. Okay. Uh, you all find you some seats or what have you. Because we got to, yeah. And you can sit over there if you want to. We'll be singing again. Go right ahead. Good morning, everybody. My name is Janice Mirakatani. Good morning, Janice. Good morning. In his book, No Hiding Place, Cecil Williams states, and by the way, it makes a terrific Christmas gift, um, that recovering, end quote, recovering people are able to drink from their own inner wells and live in the present, in this world. We take responsibility for our own lives and stop waiting for others to tell us what to do. We are empowered to live in the spirit. God finds us because we have found ourselves. Recovering people are worldly people. They want to make a difference each day. And they want abundant life now. They want abundant life for their brothers and sisters. And so bring others to the waters of recovery, of love, of acceptance, and of compassion. This is what I think is what is part of the empowering effect of our recovery programs here at Glide. For each life is a ripple in the waters, and each ripple touches the lives of so many others in this extended family. So in this season of promise, it is appropriate that we celebrate rebirth, recovery, and renewal. 
And won't you join me in rejoicing with the graduates who have completed 17 weeks of recovery, the 19th generation. Good morning, my name is Mark Fisher, I'm program coordinator and a recovering alcoholic and addict. I'd like to say something very briefly, uh, that these individuals are people who have overcome a great diversity, and as many of you know who come here on Sunday to the celebration and listen to Cecil Williams, as Cecil says, you have to go way down, deep down, in yourself in order to deal with your adversity. These people have done that uh, with a lot of hard work. They've made through 20 weeks of uh, Glide's outpatient program. And I'd like to thank Cecil and Jan for allowing this program to be alive. And also, I'd like to thank all the prior graduates that have attended this ceremony today. You might stand, give yourself a hand. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to the uh, program administrator, Ms. Juanita Williams. First, I would like to thank Reverend Cecil Williams and Jan for just letting us and just making this a place that we can just come to and change our lives because without them, we could have never done this. So I would also like to just talk about the African traditional ethnic system. The African traditional ethnic system is a system in which the welfare of the individual is a function and a result of the welfare of its community. In the system, an individual is happy only if and when the community is happy. The essence of this kind of ethical system is the preservation and integration of social as well as spiritual life. The background of this system is a traditional African society's concern for each other. Its goal is to unite members of the community into one great harmonious family in which each one continues to seek the good and the welfare of many. In the African traditional ethnic system, the individual is a function and a result of the welfare of the community. The individual is happy only if and when the community is happy. My name is Ntombe Howell, and I'm a recovering addict and alcoholic, and also a staff member. All right. Hey. At this time, I'd like to introduce um, uh, the class representative, Benita Trice. <laughs> Good morning, class. Uh, I'm Benita, a recovering addict, proud member of a graduate of the 19th generation. Yes. 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 
And um, I wrote this here poem in behalf of the 19th generation. I want to share it with you guys. The Race for Life is the title of it. In here, time gets hard and times get tough. Sometimes gets so hard, we're ready to say we've had enough. No matter how hard it gets, don't give up the fight. It doesn't get any easy out there, day or night. We couldn't quit out there on our own, so we are here for help, and we are not alone. Some of us only had one thing on our mind. We didn't care why we hurt, who we hurt, we were so blind. We learned to care about those we have lost, for our lives are no longer like a coin being tossed. Some of us may never get back what is now gone, and for some of us, this is never in the battle, which must be won. No matter how hard it gets, don't give up the dream. The harder it gets, the farther it may seem. We've been running from our problems all our lives. Some of our problems hurt bad, it cuts like a knife. We learn to deal with our problems in a different kind of way, so that we're not running from them anymore and learn how to say, I am no longer afraid to say what or how I feel. I can live life normally. To me, this is very real. My life is no longer a nightmare, which I lived in the past, running a one-man race where I always come in last. I'm tired of losing, and this I know for sure. So no matter how hard it gets, I will learn to endure. The more I learn, the stronger I get. For this race for us, is, is it over yet? Thank you. Yeah. And now we'll hear from Loretta. Hi, um, my name is Loretta, and uh, I just want to talk about being thankful today. Uh, yes. I want to thank Cecil Williams and Jen for allowing the doors to be open for us. Yes. And I want to thank all the counselors for just allowing, just putting up with all our stuff, because I know we come in here with different attitudes yes. every day. And I just want to thank them all for just being there for us and supporting us. And I just, I just want to say one thing for the, about to the 19th generation, is that what we learned is that if we don't stand for something, we'll fall for anything. Yes. We have come home, Mother Africa. We have come home, Mother Africa. We have come home, Mother Earth. We have come home, Mother Earth. We have come home, Mother Rebirth. We have come home, Mother Rebirth. Our lives come from the womb of a new spirit. Our lives come from the womb of a new spirit. A new courage. A new courage. A new faith. A new faith. A new hope. A new hope. A new love. A new love. We will never be the same. We will never be the same. It's our time. It's our time. It's recovery time. At this time, I'd like to introduce the staff. Um, Mark Fisher, who's the co-coordinator of the program with myself. Yeah. Yeah. Juanita Williams, who is the administrator. Yeah. Cedric Washington, who's one of the counselors. Yeah. Charmaine Raymond, who is one of our women counselors. Yeah. Yeah. Les Washburn, who is one of the male counselors. Yeah. John Jacobs, who is one of our counselors. Yeah. O.J., who is one of our administrators. <laughs> All right. We will now present the certificates. Okay. And if we can have I want to say that this is um, a program that could be done nowhere else in the world. And we have dealt with people who nobody else wanted, really, and Cecil made it possible for us to have it. All right. 
All right, the members of the 19th generation are William Ashley. Isaac Atkins, Sophronia Bakley, Maurice Gardner, Nisha Jones, Clifton Matthews, Michael O'Neill, Eatine O'Riden, Eric Phillips, Loretta Radius, Robert Ramsey, Victoria Stiff, Vanita Trice, Antoinette Williams, and Kevin Young. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Give them a hand. Brothers and sisters, you can sit down just a minute. I know you, this is amazing, isn't it? We would never be able to do this. Glide would never be able to have a recovery program. And it is quite a program. We'd never be able to have this program if we did not have the support of people like many of you who give your time, your energy, and your money. One of the largest contributors to Glide Church, to Glide Foundation, to the Glide programs, to, 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 to helping people to recovery is KMEL. And the manager of KMEL is here. He is a friend. He is a great supporter. That money that they, they give us is raised on the summer jam. He's here this morning. I want him to come up. Come up here, Dick Kelly. Come here. Yeah. This, uh, this plaque is given to Dick Kelly. And it says, uh, Dick Kelly, General Manager, KMEL Radio, we thank you for your courage, your compassion, and your commitment to recovery and social justice. Cecil Williams, Janice Mercatani, the Glide family, and the 19th generation of Glide's Facts on Crack program. Dick, we give you this not only as a symbol of our love and our genuine concern for what you and others do for us. But we do it because, if it wasn't for you, man, I don't know what we'd do here. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Good morning. Um, you know, this is, I've had the opportunity in a couple of years of working with KMEL and running it to accept a couple of awards and citations from organizations and groups and stuff for all the help we try to do in the community. But I will tell you that this is, uh, this is at the top right now because what we do is so important and we're, we're so humbled by, uh, you know, it's great to receive this, but the real accomplishment is behind me. And, and what we do is the easy thing. And so uh, I applaud all of you. And thank you, Cecil. Thank you. Is that your mother and father? Yeah. Dick Kelly's mother and father visiting. Stand up so we can see you. <laughs> yeah. Now, Dick didn't know this, but we have here because an African came to this church a few months ago and said, You are now a tribe. So, Dick, we welcome you to the Glide Tribe. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You can go on now. I want you to stay up. All those who are going to be baptized, stay up here. Okay. Okay. Debbie Neal's family, where are you? Where are you? Come on, let's get the. We're gonna do a little baptism here, real quick. You got the water? We have to have the water, y'all. Watch it, fellas. Don't let Reedy step over you, on you now. <laughs> Hold that, read it. Let me look at this. What's your daughter? Shanice. Shanice. Let's see, who do I have here? Eric. Who, who's on this? Shanice. And who else? Nisha. Nisha? Yeah, Nisha. Yeah, and I know. Yeah, okay. Nisha and Shanice. All right. Yeah, unless you're Godmother. Okay. We're going we're gonna, to... Come on. Who else is coming? That's right. Come on. I don't... Do I have all that? Yeah, good. Okay. Shanice? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're going to get Shanice real quick here. Shanice and... Nisha. Shanice and Nisha. In, when you become a part of the baptism, what we do, it is an act of saying, I'm, I'm ready, I'm prepared, I'm cleansed, I will go on with my life. But look what a family you have here to be a part of you. So you will never be alone because you've got this family plus Another room just like this at 9 o'clock, plus <laughs> thousands of other, others. So, Shanice, Shanice, I'm going to baptize you first. Nisha, Nisha I'm sorry. <laughs> Nisha, I'm going to baptize you first in the name of the one who comes and gives us love. In the name of God and the family. And in the name, finally of the extended family. May God bless this. Nisha. This is Shanice. This is Shanice here. Okay, Shanice, I'm gonna baptize you in the name of the one who comes in love, of the one who comes in justice and mercy, and in the one who comes to protect you along with your extended family to love you and to care with you and to help you grow to be strong and courageous and loving. Amen. Amen. Now who do we have here? Eric. Come here, Eric. <laughs> This is a good dude here. Good dude. Eric, this uh, 
Baptism is an act of saying to you that you have a new family now and that we love and, and we really care about you. So in that spirit, I'm going to baptize you in the name of the one who comes in love, in the name of the one who comes in justice, and in the name of the one who comes to walk with you and talk with you and be with you, your extended family. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, who is this? Zelly. Zoe. Zoe. Okay, Zoe. I wish I could hold you, but uh, I'm, I'm, I can't. Okay, she said no. <laughs> she don't want you to hold her, no way. <laughs> I've never had that response like that before. That's what kids will do for you. They tell you the truth. No, she said no. <laughs> well. <laughs> baptize you in the name of the one who comes in love and in the name of the one who comes in justice and in the name of your extended family who will love you and care and share with you and walk with you so that you can continue to grow. I, I just realized something. You better have some confidence if you're a minister baptizing and christening these kids, I'll tell you, man. Because they will show you up in a minute. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Y'all didn't lose my stuff, did you? Oh, I see, okay. We're not going to sing anything, you know. I'm going to just go on real quick and get this preaching done. Yeah. I've been, I've been trying to move them all morning. Can't move them. See, I just told them. Uh, my brothers and my sisters, I, I feel as though, especially at this time of the season, that we have been given a gift and that the gift that we've been given is the gift that we have not opened up yet and it may be a very difficult gift to open up because it has to do with deliverance it has to do with liberation the gift that we have been given has to do with growth. It has to do with harvest time. The gift that we have been given is one that says to us that there is something unconventional in the world that is ours if we will accept it, embrace it, and go on with our lives. The gift that we have been given is the fact that many times we face, and especially at this time of the season, what may be commonly called abandonment. To be abandoned is to, is to know that there is something that is missing, something is not there, something that may have been there is gone. It is not there anymore, and maybe it was never there. And if it were there, it seems to me that a lot of people have not known that it was there and therefore opened the gift up and make it a part of their existence. And so, and so here we are facing despair, facing tragedy. Many of us are going to lose loved ones. Some have already lost loved ones. Some will discover that they are sick, ill. Some will go and find themselves 
with their backs against the wall, not knowing what to do, not knowing what decisions to make. Some will try to make this holiday season a joyous one, but no matter what you do, the joy is still not there. Some will buy and buy and buy and still not be fulfilled. Some will, will, will move from place to place and corner to corner and street to street trying to put things together and still not be able to put things together. There is a gift that is here and the gift that we have is the gift that God, it seems to me, has come to us in a unique way, in a different way. God said, look, I tried everything else, I'm going to try something else. All right. All right. And listen and hear what God tries. What God tries is caught up in this passage. And he came to her and said, Hail, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and considered in her mind what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Do not be afraid. For you have found favor with God. I get the feeling that God has favored us here at Glide. Just look around you and you know that you've been favored when you've got people who have just come through their recovery, first stages of recovery. You know we've been favored when you've got people who are trying to make life better for themselves. You know that we've been favored when we've got all colors and all cl classes and all sexual orientations here. You know that you've been favored when you're getting rich folks and poor folks to be together, to sing together, to shout together, to clap their hands together, to, to, to work with each other. You know that you've been favored when you come through the rain and the storm and fill up the sanctuary you know you've been favored when you sing like you sing and you rejoice like you rejoice you know you've been favored we are favored here now do we realize it the gift has come all we have to do is open it up but some of us are afraid Afraid to open up the gift because we just know that it means that we got to do something different. And most of us like doing what we're doing anyway. The gift has come. And behold, behold, you shall conceive of a newborn babe. And his name shall be called Jesus. Do you know what this sanctuary is? It's a womb. You have been conceived. Something's going to happen to some of you this morning. You're going to have a new birth. Some of you came in here and you were pushed in here. Some of you came in here and didn't want to come in here. Some of you that have been coming here keep thinking that something's going to happen but I'm going to tell you something, it won't happen unless you let it happen. I'm saying to you that this is a womb, and in the womb, birth takes place. The sanctuary means womb. It means a place where people can grow. It means a place where people can have salvation, putting it in my term, liberation, where people can be lifted up and where they can become independent. You, you decided that you were going to be something you had not been before. There you were walking the street. There you were doing dope. There you were in all kinds of ways 
destroying your life, but you came here this morning to get your birth. You've been born again. But I tell you, birth cannot happen unless you go deep within the reservoirs of life. You got to go to the depths. You got to go where the wound is. You got to go where the real stuff is that you avoided, that I avoided, that we avoided. And you got to be honest about it and admit, yeah, this is what I am. This is what I'm doing. And I can't get by no longer. I'm out of control. I can't do anything with my life. I can't make decisions. It's destroying me. It's destroying everybody around me. I want some place where I can go, where I will be favored by God, where God's spirituality will lift me up and bathe me with a new mind, a new soul, a new heart, and a new life. And you've come this morning to the womb to the sanctuary God give you birth and may it last until the end of time you can't go on lying about it when you come to the sanctuary you come not to lie no more when you come in here, where growth takes place, where, where rebirth occurs, you got to stop lying. We come in here to be truthful. We come in here to stop denying. We come in here to stop lying. We come in here to stop avoiding. We come in here so we can be with each other. We come in here where we can love ourselves and love each other. We come in here where we can find new ways of touching our lives with each other. And class may get in the way, but push the class out the way and make sure that nobody goes untouched by what we do. Race may get in the way, but make sure we understand that we are uniquely who we are. Therefore, celebrate that, affirm that, but don't let race get in your way. Do Sexual orientation may get in your way, but don't let that get in your way. Because what we've got to do is know that we've all come here as a people who are seeking what it means to be human, what it means to be powerful, and what it means to love and care for each other. Bring justice now in this place. I want to say to you, my brothers and my sisters who graduate today, see, if you're favored, you had to be favored to make the choice you did, to come in here and go through what you've gone through. God favored you. All right, let me put it another way. God gave you grace and said, all right, make a choice. Make a choice. Do something with your life. Stop killing yourself and stop killing your kids and stop killing everybody else. Yeah. You're favored. You've been given another life. Just think about that. You have been given another life. You don't have that old life no more. And if you do, if it ever calls back and knocks on your door, you know what to say to it. Look, I've been with you before and I ain't going with you no more. And say to it also, all of us, no matter who we are, what the writer of Romans wrote to the early church, the early Christian church, the early church, the early community, the early place where people came together. He said this, said this, listen, listen. What then shall we say about all of this recovery and all of this liberation and all of this where people come together? What shall we say? He said, if God is for us, who can be against us? I have a feeling we've been favored. And if God has favored us, who can be against us? Bring on your mean spirit. 
Bring on your hard-hearted hearts. Bring on your segregationist ideas. Bring on your hatred. Bring on your malice. Bring on your getting back. Bring it all in here. But when you come, you better get ready. You better get ready. Because there's something that we've been favored with. It's the love that came down at Christmas, which was born in a manger, a lowly manger, where homeless people dwell, where people who were rejected and outcast, no matter who you are, were put in, the, in, in, in a barn. I want you to know something this morning, that no matter who you are or where you're from, if God is for you, then... It, all you got to do is decide and go on with your life. Sometimes I feel like God's for me. To tell you the truth, sometimes I feel like God said, leave me alone. But you see, you got to understand. I want you to hear this. God has provided me with the, with the understanding of I don't have to be conventional of being unconventional. That's why you can go through this program. It's an unconventional program. It doesn't, it doesn't fit into the conventional stuff. That's why I married this woman right here. Because she is not a conventional minister's wife. Not by any means. I'm so glad, I'm so glad that she's got her own self, that she writes and, 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 and she, she, she administrates and, and she creates and she uh, dictates and she, <laughs> and, and she is profound. She, she is a woman who stands in the midst of, of community and says, I am who I am and nobody can bring me down. I'm, I'm on a road, on a journey myself and therefore you cannot deter where I'm going. Thank God for her unconventionality. Thank you. Thank God for you also, you strange, <laughs> unconventional, <laughs> unconventional, <laughs> unconventional. I decided to go shopping on Friday and I went to a certain place and when I got in there, I saw more glide folks in there than, than I do almost on Sundays here. They're all working over. They took over that place. So I went around and did a little shopping. And what the joy of all of it was that so many people just came and said, thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Keep it up. You're doing a great job. We love you. We really appreciate you. And we're going to keep it up. And we're going to keep it going. Because we're favored. I don't want to sound like God is always with me. I don't want to say God's on my side because I don't make that kind of statement, God's on my side. I'm just telling you that, ain't, you know, when you've got all this, you must be favored by somebody. And I know the devil ain't doing all this. Now, let me close out by defining for you because some people say, you know, Cecil, your, your, your definition of sin is, it's not hard enough. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I ain't got no hard definition of sin. All right. I ain't got no traditional definition of sin. Thank you. Mine is unconventional. Right. And somebody was over there at 9 o'clock and they kept saying, right on, hallelujah, amen. You know, some woman, she was really happy about that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> See, anytime you are separated from yourself, 
and you're separated from your brothers and sisters and you're separated from God then one tends to be evil some of the most evil acts are those committed by us upon ourselves and upon our brothers and sisters when we have to kill to make it something's wrong when we have to engage in violence to get something's wrong when we have to destroy humanity to prove that we're the most powerful nation in the world something's wrong I'm telling you what we should be doing you see is making sure that we don't have separation from each other we should be blending our voices like you are as you sing you see each from his own voice each in his own tune each harmoniously being with each other we should not let what happens out there make us less than what we are here right now we should take what we have here out there and make them better what they are and what they can do that's what we need to do if God is for us who can be against us take that with you brothers and sisters take that with you you are favored you have the symbols of your favorite, favoredness on. The kinty cloth around your neck, the Bible's in your hand, your certificates, but most of all, your soul has been restored. You got a new soul. You got a new soul. You got a new soul. I, every time I see Jackie, who graduated in the last generation, she said, hey, Cecil! Oh, Cecil! I know it's Jackie's voice because it's a new voice. She didn't have that voice when she came here. A lot of you didn't have voices like you have. You were even afraid to stand up here and talk. You were afraid to come into the midst. You sat in the back and hid your faces. But I see you now. You're moving on up. You're moving on up. If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. Before we go, I want Charlotte Kwan to come up here. Where are you, Charlotte Kwan? Show your face. Somebody grab her. Here you are. It is her birthday, and we honor her. Coming up, the chair of the board, and also the chair of the membership committee. Happy birthday.